In this video, we're going to look at the lattice energy and the born haber cycle. So this conversation really centers around ionic solids. And ionic solids are usually formed with some metal M uh, that typically has a very low ionization energy and some sort of uh, halogen or uh, compound on the far right of the periodic table that has a very high electron affinity. These, uh, these atoms get together and form these really tightly packed ionic solids. Uh, so you can think of something like sodium chloride or you know, potassium fluoride or something like that, where you have some metal uh, with a low ionization energy and some halogen compound, halogen atom um, with a very lo um, low or high electron affinity, right? So they've packed together and formed these tight solids. So um, when they form these tight solids, they're, they're really tightly packed because of Coulombic interactions, right? So Coulombic interactions, right, cause these to be really tightly bound together, right? You have a positively charged metal, negatively charged halogen atom. They start to form together into these really tight packed configurations because of these uh, Coulombic interactions that are really holding them together. Right. So what the lattice enthalpy is, is the energy associated with the formation of this uh, solid from the individual ions. Right. So that's really this process here, um, the dissociation of this solid into its individual ions. So we use delta H sub L as the lattice enthalpy. So this is the lattice enthalpy. Right. And it's really the the, you know, enthalpy associated with forming this tightly packed uh, solid, because really the enthalpy of formation alone does not account for the stability of these ionic solids. They're more stable than usual. Um, and it's not all accounted for just from the formation enthalpy. So this is really a special type of enthalpy associated with the formation of these lattice compounds. Now, the only issue here is that it's very, very difficult to measure uh, the lattice enthalpy experimentally. It's hard to just vaporize one of these tight solids into its individual ionic components. This experimentally is impossible to do. So uh, what we do instead, and this is really one of the most magnificent applications of enthalpy as a state function that we really have in, in thermodynamics, um, is instead of doing this process directly, what we do, since enthalpy is a state function, it doesn't matter what path we take to get from reactants to products, as long as we begin and end with the same thing, right? We can, you know, add those up and get the same enthalpy, right? So uh, since that's true, what we do is just imagine a series of steps, of individual steps, and form a cycle that gives us the lattice enthalpy, right? So that cycle is called the Born-Haber cycle, which I've drawn out a diagram uh, on the right-hand side here that includes six steps. Without even you know paying too close attention to each of these steps, you see that it's cyclical, right? It goes through uh, these six steps that begin and end at the solid, right? So keep in mind, like we saw in the last video, if we begin and end with the exact same thing, when you add up all of the enthalpy changes here, they should equal zero, right? So we're gonna make use of that here in order to solve for this lattice enthalpy. Okay, so uh, let's go through this one by one, step by step, and make sure we understand what's going on at each step, right? So step one here, we're going from the solid uh, metal and halogen interacting, right, to this dissociated compound, right? So the first step is the dissociation of the compound. So dissociation is the first step, right? And so what's happening there in this, um, in this compound, we have MX solid that's being decomposed into the solid metal plus one half X2. Right. So and I'm putting X here. But like I said in the beginning, these are usually halogen compounds. Keep in mind that the halogens are usually dimers as standard conditions. Right. So 
Um, so something like, you know, fluorine is going to be F2 at standard conditions, bromine is Br2, etc. Right. So um, so that's why I'm accounting for the dimerization of this guy here by putting a one half uh, stoichiometric coefficient in front. OK, so uh, the first step is dissociation of the whole compound. Right. So that's this first step here. Now, the second step, uh, if we look at what happens here from going from uh, this step here to this step, then what we see is that the metal goes from being a solid to a gas, right? So in step two, what we're just looking at is purely the sublimation of the metal, right? So step two is just sublimation of M. So what we're doing there is M solid is just becoming M gas. Right. So that is the only thing that's occurring in this second step. Right. You'll notice that um, X stays the same. Right. So that guy stays the same. The only thing we're looking at here in step two is just a sublimation of the metal. Right. Now, let's look at what changes uh, during step three. Right. You'll notice that the metal is still the same gaseous species. Right. So nothing changes with it. However, in this third step, we end up with just one atom of the uh, of the halogen rather than two right so we're basically in this step looking at purely the dissociation of the halogen right so for three we're looking at the dissociation of x right so we're going from one half x2 to just x right and all these are gases at this point right so uh, so we're going from the dissociation of so we're, at step three what we're looking at is just the dissociation of the halogen that's the only thing that changes uh, during step three okay now looking at step four right what happens in step four X stays the same it's just a gas what happens here is the ionization of the metal right we're ionizing the metal and forming an electron there right so for step four, we have the ionization of the metal. So this is ionization of M, right? So we're starting with M as a gas and we're ionizing that guy to get the cation plus a free electron, right? Okay, so now looking at step five, right? So going to step five. In step five, if we notice, uh, the metal is the same, right? So it's still going to be a cation after step five. What's happening here is the electron is being added to the halogen, right? So we're going from a neutral uh, X to X with a negative charge. So that means that electron is being added to X so step five is the electron attachment uh, of X. So electron attachment for X, right? So what's going on there is we got X gas plus the free electron uh, is going to give us X negative, right? So step five is just the electron attachment uh, for X, right? Okay, so now we actually have the individual charged species that form the ionic solid. So the last step is just to form the ionic solid. And note that this is actually the opposite process of uh, the process that defines our lattice enthalpy. So what I'm gonna write here, this is just going to be negative the lattice enthalpy, right? So, uh, so that's it. The final step of the Born-Haber cycle is just the formation of the solid from the gas, right? So we'll write that down here as step six, right? So formation of solid, right? So that's just M plus plus X minus yielding our solid ionic compound, right? So giving us this ionic solid from the gaseous species, right?
Okay, and that's the full born Haber cycle, right? So each step is really just one of these elementary um, reaction steps, one of these elementary physical changes, um, and we just add them all up to get the total lattice energy. And this is all made possible because of the fact that enthalpy is a state function. So um, it's underlying mathematics that gives us this thermodynamic power. Okay, so uh, how do we actually calculate the lattice energy from this? Let's, uh, let's finish this out. So we have this cycle, right? Remind yourself, this is all a cycle, right? So we're starting and ending in the same place. That means that if we add together all of these enthalpy changes, they have to all sum to zero, right? Since we're, at, well, since we're beginning and ending at the same place, starting with this ionic solid, ending with an, ion an ionic solid, we have to have all of them add up to equal zero, right? And we, we have a, a enthalpy, we'll have an enthalpy associated with each one of these steps, Right, so we can uh, label them based on the number, right? So we'll have an enthalpy associated with that first step. I'll call that delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 plus delta H4 plus delta H5. Now for uh, delta H, for the last delta H, I'm going to use the lattice enthalpy, right? So notice, uh, that's why I put this here, right? This sixth step is really the negative of the lattice enthalpy. That's what we're trying to calculate, right? So we wanna put that in there. So that last step is just negative delta H L. All of this sums up to equal zero. So all we have to do is do some easy algebra to isolate delta H L Right, so if we isolate delta H L, our lattice enthalpy, that's just going to be delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 plus delta H4 plus delta H5. Right, so this is how you would calculate the lattice enthalpy. Right, you would basically sum up all of the enthalpies associated with each of these individual um, these individual steps, add them up to get the lattice enthalpy, right? So like I said, this is very powerful because if you want to know uh, the relative stability of an ionic solid, you can either just look up these values that are associated with the ionic solid that you're interested in, right? Most tables will have these, you know, um, electron attachment enthalpies, ionization enthalpies. You add all of those up or determine them experimentally if it's an ionic solid with some sort of unknown, um, uh, unknown electron attachment or, you know, ionization or what have you, right? So, um, so this gives us the power to be able to calculate the lattice enthalpy uh, for most common ionic solids just from readily available uh, values that are associated with these standard processes.